This talk is called Optimizing Brain Health, and, and I am a neurologist at Waikato Hospital in Hamilton. To me, the brain is like a garden. What do you need for a healthy garden? You need seeds. Those are the blueprints for the plants that form the garden. You need an environment. You need water and sunlight to help the plants grow. You need the soil or terrain that also helps the plants grow. Some people, many farmers, would probably say you need some chemicals or besides pesticides to help the, the uh, garden or you know, area of farmland grow. I guess I would say that the environment and the soil or the terrain are the most important factors for a healthy garden. The brain is like a garden. The blueprint is in the genes, the genetic code, and those are like the seed, that's like the seeds. The brain grows through experiences as we've seen with many talks today, positive experiences. These are the water and sunlight for the brain. The brain also grows through its mitochondria. This is the soil or terrain. Some people, doctors, many of them, would say you need medications to be healthy too. Now, I'm not a farmer, so I'm not sure about the chemicals, but I am a doctor, and I know most of my colleagues would say that medications are important, especially as people get older. I would argue, though, that the experiences in mitochondria are the two key components to brain health. Let's go over experiences first. This is a very loose definition of experience, but it's situations we encounter which shape our genes. The genes in our brain do not change, the genetic code does not really alter. It's how we express it that matters. And William alluded to this earlier when he discussed this hugely important concept of epigenetics. I view epigenetics simply. So this is a wonderful book from the 1800s written by Dumas, the Count of Monte Cristo. It is fixed in time, it cannot change. That's like a genetic code, it's a script. But the same book can be translated into the 1975 version uh, of the film starring Richard Chamberlain or the 2002 version starring Jim Cavazil and Guy Pearce. They're very different versions if you've seen them. And I've seen both several times. So, <laughs> The brain is the same. You can have the same genetic code, but come out with two drastically different versions of the brain. And it's all about the experiences that brain has through life. It's not all about that, but it's a hugely important part of it. Our brain, before we understand this, we have to understand this, that the brain is not like a computer. I still think the concept that you guys were talking about in the last talk is, is <laughs> extremely interesting and valid. But the brain is not like a computer. A computer has inputs and outputs in a central processing unit. The CPU is used to make logic-based computations. The computer must be programmed. They're usually pretty inflexible and they're not very tolerant of failures. Most of all, computers don't understand what they do. I will not get into the semantics of what understanding means, but they don't. Our brain is different. It is a cognitive model of the world. Brains have distributed processing. They process throughout the entire connectivity of the brain. There's no central processing unit, it's distributed. They don't use logic-based rules or computations. They retrieve memories. Brains are self-learning and flexible, and they're very tolerant to failures. If you look at the brain there, the green arrows show how sensory signals from the world go through the eyes and the ears and the skin receptors up to the thalamus, which is in the middle of the brain, and they spread out through the brain to the neocortex, which is that outer edge. Now that neocortex is where a lot of our memories are, probably nearly all of them. Despite the fact that, that there are lots of sensory signals going in and the brain is detecting some of those, a lot of them, there are 10 times as many connections anatomically going back from the cortex to the thalamus, which implies the brain's main role is not to detect sensory signals in the world. This is not so easy to understand. The brain's main job is to create a little inner cognitive model of the world. We all walk around with a model of the world and this is what makes us so powerful against a computer. We don't compute, we make predictions based on our model. Using the model, we understand the world to an extent 
And what we see, what we hear, what we feel is not so much the sensory signals from the world represented by the green arrows. It's more about what we're projecting, okay? So it's as Robin said, the brain is a belief-based projection machine. It's not logic-based. We run on beliefs.